Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we have yet another continuation of the library tour. We are getting close to the end here. We've gone through 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11, so this is number 12 out of 14. Um, so we've got two more weeks. One more with books and then the other with graphic novels and comics. Uh, and we're, we're, we're getting to arguably the most eclectic uh, shelf in this collection. It's got a, a variety of things in here. Uh, some semblance of biographies and a little bit of historical fiction at the end and then just a, a range of anthologies and, and other miscellaneous kind of in the center here. So let's get right to it. We have Shakespeare's Kings. So this is the great plays in the history of England in the Middle Ages, 1337 to 1485. So you can see here, so yeah, Richard II, Henry IV, V, VI, and then Richard III. So those are some really major players uh, in, in the historical plays. And these ones right here make up uh, one of the quad of plays. And then these two make up the other quad of historical plays in there. Um, and they're all really, really enjoyable. Uh, so I'm excited to, to dig into that one at some point in time. Next we have A Year in the Life of William Shakespeare, 1599, by James Shapiro. Uh, I'm really, really looking forward to this one as well. Uh, I, I have every intention to read both of these, if possible, sometime this year. But my nonfiction, biographical, those types of readings are... Uh, unfortunately low on the priority list because they are unfortunately slow to get through and uh, th there's that feeling of I need to be fast for booktube uh, and I'm trying to fight that this month. Um, I've, we're eight, nine days in, whatever, uh, yeah nine days in, I've, I've finished one book so far and that's only because it was audiobook. Uh, so I, I'm enjoying the slower pace to work my way through a variety of readings and, and you'll see some of that in the next uh, couple of days as I break down some of what I've been reading last week. We have King, The Inklings and King Arthur. So these are uh, Tolkien, Charles Williams, Lewis, and then Owen Barfield on the Matter of Britain, uh, edited by Serena Higgins. And this is really, really enjoyable so far. Uh, you can see I've, I've made some headway in here. Uh, I read about a, an essay a month or two, every month or two. Uh, and I need to get back around to uh, picking up another one here sometime soon because I do enjoy them quite a bit. One that I read last year and enjoyed, uh, A Hobbit, A Wardrobe, and a Great War. This is by Joseph Leconte. And this is uh, how Tolkien and Lewis rediscovered faith, friendship, and heroism in the cataclysm of the First World War. Uh, really, really enjoyable read. Go into it knowing that the first half is going to focus very, very strongly on World War I and the events that happened, and Lewis's and Tolkien's place in that action. And then the second half kind of redeems it by focusing more on its impact on their writings, uh, which is what I was signing up for uh, when I picked up that book. Another one that I have every intention of trying to get to this year. Uh, we're, we're quickly running out of year to get to it. Fellowship, The Literary Lives of the Inklings. Um, I really, really want to get to this. This is not a thin book, but this may be my next nonfiction that has to go up onto my shelf uh, so that I can start digging into it sometime very, very soon. This is Master of Adventure, The Worlds of Edgar Rice Burroughs by Richard A. Lupoff. I do need to get back to reading more Burroughs. I really, really would like to. And this would be a great one to read at some point in time. Alongside that. And now we're getting into the eclecticism. Uh, the, the, the books that maybe only Dr. Philip Chase, which I don't think he watches my channel, uh, would be interested in. Uh, at least for a good chunk of these. Because we're back to Anglo-Saxon, Old English, m Medieval texts that for some reason I have them kind of separated out here uh, from the medieval literature even though they could certainly fit in with that. So we have An Introduction to Old English 
by Jonathan Evans. This is one I picked up with uh, an Amazon gift card that I got for Christmas. Uh, one of three old English books I picked up uh, that I need to to start working my way through. I probably should start doing that because I really want to get back to learning Old English. There's just not enough time in the day, guys, to do everything I want to do because I want to write and I need to be writing more too. We have the Cambridge Old English Reader, second edition by Richard Mardson. So I've got two different ways of uh, going about learning some Old English there. We have the delightful Norton Anthology of English Literature, Middle Ages. Uh, got a great mix of medieval and Middle Ages texts. We have a Cambridge Companion to Old English Literature. So, you know, the, I, I know those are flying off of everybody's shelf. Another one that I need to get around to, uh, this is significantly shorter, Sweet's Anglo-Saxon Primer, 9th edition. So this is a, a good way of learning and, and practicing uh, Old English in a small form. Readings in Medieval History, Volume 2. Funny thing about this. So I picked this up. This is 4th edition. I, I'm yet to see Volume 1. I'd like to find Volume 1. I, I had picked this up probably a year or two ago. Was at Half Price Books browsing. Saw this book. I was like, oh, that's interesting. That's uh, one I'd like to get. Came home. Yeah, I, I had this already on the shelf. <laughs> um, and that's why you run the risk when you don't catalog your library very well. Of, hey, this sparks my interest. I haven't ever read it yet, uh, but it's one I want to get to at some point in time. So, of course, I went and took the, the, first, the, the duplicate back and uh, picked up something else, but it's just funny. The, the odds of running across this book twice here in Iowa is very, very small. Obviously not as small as I thought. Cambridge Companion to Medieval Literature. 11, or, yeah, 1100 to 1500 Medieval English Literature. Lots and lots of books that I really want to get to. This is one of the ones that I picked up uh, as well with that uh, gift card. Eight Old English Poems, edited and with commentary and glossary by John C. Pope. Third edition, revised by R.D. Folk. Uh, so that's a, that's a pretty big prominent name in uh, medieval studies. We have Backgrounds to Medieval English Literature by Robert W. Ackerman. So it's got some really good stuff in here. So it talks about social and religious backgrounds, uh, English language, Christian doctrine, worldview. Uh, so re really good information in here. I, I need to get around to it at some point in time. A Celtic Miscellany. Uh, so this is going to have a variety of stuff, I imagine, being a miscellany. So translations from Celtic literatures. So we've got things, it's broken down, so we got Hero Tales and Adventures, we've got Nature, and it's going to go through, I mean, each of these is very, very short. Love, Epigram, Celtic Magic, Description, Humor and Satire, Bardic Poetry, Elegy, Religion, uh, lot, lots and lots of stuff, and most of these are just a page or two long. So this would be a great daily chip away at type of thing. We've got Anglo-Saxon Verse by Graham Holderness. Medieval romances. So this has got Percival, Tristan, and Isolde, the youth of Alexander the Great, Arcassin and Nicolette, Havelock the Dane, Sir Orfeo, Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, and the Book of Balin. Um, so again, they, these are the things that really call to me. Uh, unfortunately, they, they don't get into my reading priority often enough, and, and I need to change that. I want to change that desperately. This is one I read last year, uh, right before starting Booktube. English Saxon World in the anthology. This is excellent. This is uh has the complete text of Beowulf in here, and it's translated by Kevin Crossley Holland, who does a great job. Uh, very very wide variety of text from that period in there. If you want a, a good sampling of 
some of the different things that come out of medieval writings, in, including laws and riddles and, and other texts that aren't covered nearly as often. We have a, a very short introduction here for middle, medieval literature. I like this very short introduction line of books. There's a lot of them I would be interested in picking up. Uh, so anytime I happen to see one, I do pick one up if it, I'm interested in the, the topic. So as, as, so far I've got two, because I haven't run across very many in the wild. Uh, but there's page after page after page of the, the different volumes that they offer. But I would love to pick up quite a few of them, uh, because these are about 100 pages long. They fit well in a pocket and make a good on-the-go type of reading. We have early fiction in England from Geoffrey of Monmouth to Chaucer. So it's a great period there, nice Penguin classic. We have an introduction to Middle English, which has grammar and text. And there you see Artie Folk making his appearance yet again. We have a companion to the Gawain poet, headed by Derek Brewer. Again, these, these are all things I would love to get back to and, and to revisit and to read. I need to make a point of moving one of these up onto my current reading shelf, and that way I can kind of cycle it in. I read this at the end of last year, Student's Guide to Chaucer's Middle English, by Peter G. Bedler. Biedler. Uh, does a nice job. Nice enough that I decided to, to hang on to it after reading it. We have a Norton Critical for Middle English Romances, selected and edited by Stephen H. A. Shepard. So, you know me, and, and Norton Critical, it, it's a weak spot, and this especially is a uh, fantastic volume, I imagine, that I would love to, to get around to. Myths and Legends of the Middle Ages by H. A. Gerber, Gerber, with 36 illustrations. Let's see if we can come across one. And you'd think that just by flipping. So you, you've got an illustration there. So these are clearly in black and white. But, I mean, they're, they're decent illustrations. We have the Norton Introduction to Literature, Portable 13th Edition by Kelly and J. Mays. Great, great way to get an overview, a broad overview. That is the text I'll be using this summer for teaching my literature class uh, at the college level. Got uh, the Book of the 20th Century Essays, edited by Ian Hamilton. Uh, got a, a wide range of people that I recognize, their names, and I want to read a few more essays. Uh, it's not high on my priority list, but it is nice every once in a while to, to pick it up and grab uh, and read an essay or two out of it. Chaucer and His Contemporaries, Essays on Medieval Literature and Thought, edited in with introduction by Helene Newstead. We have an Owen Barfield text here, History in English Words, with a foreword by W.H. Auden. So that's another big name that you'll recognize. And now we're getting into the final books here and, and starting the uh, historical fiction. And of course, we're, we're visiting Bernard Cornwell here, Sword Song. So this is uh, the Battle for London. I think this is either book three or four in the Saxon Tales series, which is excellent. I, I think I've read the first nine or ten or so, and, and I need to circle back around it and not only pick all of them up, but to read all of them again and, and finish the series. I'm not sure if he's completed the series or if this is going to be like the Sharps series that's going to go on for 800,000 books. Uh, but they're, they're excellent, and I want to read them and revisit them again. We have Excalibur, a novel of Arthur by Bernard Cornwall. This is book three in his uh, series that started with The Winter King. I need mean, book two to read that because I read The Winter King last year and absolutely loved it. And this is book three. So need to get around to that at some point. And then last but 
certainly not least, uh, another very fitting author to have on this uh, historical fiction start uh, is Ken Follett, The Pillars of the Earth, which is magnificent. Was one of my favorite reads last year, along with The Winter King. Both of them were among my absolute favorite books I read last year. And I want to continue both of those series. It may not be this year. I don't have the continuations for either of them on my shelf. Uh, but I will at some point in time. Uh, and want to continue those. So There you have it. There's that shelf. Next we have uh, mostly more historical fiction. A uh, little bit of horror at the end. Uh, and then some books where I... Some anthologies where my own writings made an appearance. So uh, that's how we'll be wrapping up the book books next week when we continue this library tour. I hope you enjoyed. Um, let me know if... Uh, what 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 are, Have you done a library tour of your own yet? Uh, are you going to? Because I would love to see them. Uh, as long as you're not Steve Donahue where we're 80 parts in and he's still going strong. Uh, it'd be nice to see what you've got on your shelf, so... I hope you have a great day, and uh, thank you, BookTube.